Hey guys, I'm Redeem Zoomer, and today we're going over three countries you wouldn't expect that have strong, historic, traditional, and institutionally rooted churches that are still theologically conservative today. And I'm showing you guys this on my historic churches map. You can find a link in the description. And every single church on this map is part of a classical Protestant denomination. That means churches with theology rooted in the Reformation. That would exclude any Baptist or non-denominational churches. They're all theologically conservative, meaning they still hold to the theology they were founded upon. So this would exclude theologically liberal pride flag churches. They are all traditional in their architecture and worship style. So this means no Applebee's church plants or anything like that. All these churches are classical Protestant, traditional in both style and beliefs. This is a map I made. I'm still adding to it. If you have suggestions for this map, you can tell me as long as they meet all the qualifications I, I just went over. So yeah, you can find tons of Protestant churches on this map, not just Reformed ones. I have Lutheran and Anglican churches here too, um, and Presbyterian like these ones, Congregationalist or Dutch Reformed, or Continental Reformed in Europe. They would all fall under the broader umbrella of Reformed. So there are a lot of countries that are famous for being historically reformed. You have the Presbyterian churches all over Scotland, and yes, there are still a lot of great Presbyterian churches all over Scotland, but the problem is the mainline church in Scotland, the Church of Scotland, is largely theologically liberal. The same deal is with the mainline churches in the United States. In most Western countries, the mainline Protestant churches have gone liberal, so the only place to find conservative churches are either in conservative offshoots or in minorities within the mainline churches, because every mainline church does have a minority of conservative churches. I should know. I'm a conservative Christian in the PCUSA, a liberal mainline Protestant denomination. Nomination. But uh, Scotland is not a good example of a country that still has its institutional church being conservative, because it doesn't. There's the Free Church of Scotland, which is conservative, and a few other offshoots, but the mainline church in Scotland has gone liberal. Another historically reformed country that's famous for being reformed is the Netherlands, but it's the same deal. The Protestant church in the Netherlands, or the PKN, once again, it's not quite as theologically liberal as some denominations, but it has problems. So you will find churches that are still conservative like this one. Like there's lots and lots of great reformed churches in the Netherlands, but still you can't necessarily trust the denomination as a whole. And the same is true of, I don't know, Switzerland. Switzerland was where John Calvin was from. The Swiss Reformed Church also has a lot of theological liberalism. So once again, the conservative churches within them are a bit of a minority. I'm hoping that St. Pierre Cathedral is still solid. This was John Calvin's church. It's an absolutely beautiful church. It's where John Calvin preached and stuff. But in many of these Western countries, many of these historical Calvinist countries, um, they've abandoned the beliefs they were founded upon. And the same is true in the United States. There's great reformed mainline denominations in the United States like the PCUSA or the Reformed Church in America, and I am fighting to restore those denominations, but as of right now, they are greatly infected with bad theology. But there are three countries you wouldn't expect that still have theologically conservative reformed mainline denominations. That means you don't have to dig through these conservative offshoots to find churches that still have good Calvinist theology. They still hold to the theology they were founded upon. So example number one is Brazil. The Presbyterian Church of Brazil is the mainline church there. It's kind of the equivalent of the PCUSA in America. The only difference is the Presbyterian Church in Brazil never went theologically liberal like the PCUSA did. So in Brazil, there's no PCUSA or PCA or OPC. There's really just one Presbyterian denomination. It's the Presbyterian Church in Brazil. So you have a beautiful mainline denomination that is still theologically faithful. And there's a lot of churches like this. There's this great Presbyterian cathedral. Yes, I know Presbyterians don't literally have cathedrals. It's in the style of a cathedral, though. In Rio de Janeiro, um, absolutely beautiful place. There's a um, statue commemorating, I think it was either Calvin or Knox doing the first Eucharist um, as part of the Reformation. Lots of, um, this is just one big Presbyterian church in Brazil. There's Presbyterian churches like this all over Brazil. 
and I want to promote Presbyterianism in Brazil because while there is a strong Presbyterian church in Brazil, there's also a lot of churches with bad theology in Brazil. A lot of very charismatic churches that I've heard make Christianity seem a lot more anti-intellectual. So, if you are in Brazil, and you are a Presbyterian, I would encourage you to start a YouTube channel in Portuguese. A lot of people, for some reason I do have a lot of followers in Brazil already, a lot of them ask me if they can translate my videos into Portuguese and post them. Yes, please do so. If you are a Presbyterian in Brazil and you want to make a YouTube channel, please do so. If you tell me about it, I will promote your YouTube channel. You can translate any of my material you want. You don't even need to credit me. I just want to promote the Presbyterian Church in Brazil. So if you start a Portuguese language reformed or Presbyterian YouTube channel, I will promote it. Now, when I say reformed, I should define what I mean. I use the terms, you know, reformed, Calvinist, and Presbyterian interchangeably, because all over the world you'll find a lot of Baptist and non-denominational churches that call themselves reformed. But as I indicated in this video, um, Baptists and non-denominationals can't really be considered reformed because Baptist theology completely contradicts the theology of the Reformation. All of the Protestant reformers firmly held to infant baptism. You cannot be reformed if you do not hold to infant baptism. That is one of the most important aspects of covenant theology, which is the bedrock for reformed theology. So there's a lot of famous reformed preachers like John MacArthur or John Piper or Steve Lawson or, I don't know, Jeff Durbin, whatever. They are Baptists. They could be called Calvinistic Baptists because they have a reformed or Calvinist view of predestination, but they are not reformed in the roots of their theology. The reformed tradition and the Baptist tradition are two separate branches of the Christian family tree. I'm not saying Baptists aren't good Christians. I'm just saying they do not hold to any sort of classical Reformation theology. So all the churches on this map are Reformation churches. Like I said, um, this also includes Lutherans and Anglicans that are not necessarily Reformed. Um, because I, this is just classical Protestant churches in general. But all the churches on this map are, all the Reformed churches on this map are going to be either Presbyterian or Dutch Reformed slash Continental Reformed, which is kind of just the equivalent of Presbyterian, but comes from Continental Europe rather than, um, rather than Scotland. And speaking of Continental Europe, the second country that I'm going to talk about is Hungary. There is a really strong reformed Calvinist church in Hungary. Yes, Hungary is a majority Catholic nation, but there is still a very strong Hungarian Calvinist denomination as well, and there always has been. Um, the Reformation did hit Hungary pretty hard, so there has always been a strong reformed Calvinist presence in Hungary. So there are tons of really awesome reformed churches in Hungary. Wait, where's that? Um, yes, there's churches like this all over Hungary. This is a Calvinist church. Again, some people act like Protestants don't have good architecture, but that's only because a lot of Protestant churches that are founded today are, you know, non-denominational or other evangelical churches. But this is traditional Calvinist architecture. Calvinists care about architecture just as much as Catholics do. The only difference is if you look in a Calvinist church, there are no icons, there are no images of God, because we believe the second commandment, which says don't make images of God, also applies to images of Christ, because Jesus is God. So you'll find images, that you'll find like statues of theologians or something, even images of the saints. You will generally not find images of God in any Calvinist church. You'll still have stained glass, but it's going to be a more abstract, non-figurative stained glass. So there's churches like this all over Hungary. I think the reformed capital of Hungary is this city. How do you pronounce this? It's um, De Debrecen. I'm so sorry to my Hungarian followers if I totally... Um, butchered that denomination. There's this church called the Great Reformed Great Church of Debrecen. It's this big church, very Hungarian-style architecture. I've noticed Eastern European churches use a lot of yellow in them. I I'm not sure if there's a reason for that, but yeah, this is um, someone made a replica of this in the Reformed city on my Minecraft server once. So yeah, Hungary is absolutely littered with solid confessional and historic reformed Calvinist churches everywhere. And there's also a pretty solid reformed denomination in Romania as well. I think I recently updated this map. Yeah, here we go, here we go. So Romania also has a solid reformed denomination, the Reformed Church of Transylvania. And some of these churches in Romania do look like Dracula's castle, sort of spill over from like the Hungarian reformed tradition. 
So this little symbol, this is the Huguenot symbol. Um, so churches on my map that have this symbol are also reformed. They're just part of the continental reform tradition. And Slovakia, by the way, um, this is not one of the three countries on the list, but Slovakia has a solid Lutheran denomination as well, unlike Germany, because while Germany is a historic Lutheran country, the EKD denomination, the, um, I think it's like Evangelical Kirsch, the Deutschland, I don't speak German. The EKD is largely theological, theologically liberal, so solid Lutheran churches in Germany are a bit more sparse, but the Slovakian Lutheran denomination is really solid. And all, of, all over Eastern Europe, even though Eastern Europe is not very Protestant overall, mo mostly Catholic and Orthodox, you will find Calvinist and Lutheran denominations and churches scattered all throughout Eastern Europe. So that's Hungary. The third church, I mean the third country with a solid Calvinist church that I'm going to talk about is South Korea. South Korea is a very Presbyterian country, and South Korea has some of the most hardcore Presbyterians you'll ever meet. And that's why South Korean immigrants to the United States are often the most hardcore Presbyterians, even in the PCUSA. I mentioned my denomination, the PCUSA, which is in America. I mean, not all these churches in America are PCUSA. A lot of them are like, um, uh, a lot of them are like Cumberland Presbyterian or PCA, or I mean, some of them are PCUSA. I put any solid, um, any solid Presbyterian church, no matter what denomination it is, goes on this map as long as it has, you know, traditional worship, architecture, and theology. Um, but in the PCUSA, while the PCUSA is largely theologically liberal, the Korean churches within the PCUSA are almost always very conservative. Of course, I work with alliances of conservatives in the PCUSA because I have the whole Operation Reconquista to retake the PCUSA. And I was speaking to the former pastor of First Presbyterian San Diego, uh, First Presbyterian San Diego is still a solidly conservative church within the PCUSA, and the former senior pastor there told me he doesn't like having Koreans run his conferences, and I was like, why is that? And he's like, because I don't feel like waking up at 4 a.m. to pray. <laughs> the point is that Korean Presbyterians are the most hardcore Presbyterians you'll ever meet. I think the reason is that American missionaries to South Korea, they came there in like the 1800s, and the American Presbyterian missionaries were the most hardcore of all the American Presbyterians. And then when they started uh, forming churches in Korea, basically Korea got the most hardcore slice of American Presbyterianism that there was. So yeah, South Korea, very, very solid, strong Presbyterian country. There's also some sus churches in South Korea as well, like the whole Unification Mooney Church, but that doesn't change the fact. I mean, look at this. This is Presbyterians go hard in South Korea. Um, so yeah, all of Korea has a very strong Christian history. Um, it's it's kind of like a mega church, but with good architecture and also good theology. Um, of, sadly, a very tragic reality is North Korea also used to before you know the communist um, Kim regime. North Korea used to be a solid Presbyterian country as well. The first dictator of North Korea, uh, Kim Il Sung, he was actually raised Presbyterian. He sadly abandoned the faith. I think there's like one Protestant church left in all of North Korea. Um, yes, there are churches in North Korea, but they're very monitored. It's it's a sad place. Pray for North Korea. Pray for North Korea to become the uh, the Jerusalem of the East that it used to be. Pyongyang used to be referred to as the Jerusalem of the East. So that's about it for this video, guys. I just wanted to tell you examples of three historically rooted Calvinist churches that are still, you know, active, but they're not in the countries we normally think about, so we often forget about them. And once again, just like with what I said with Brazil, if you are a Korean speaker and you are into Reformed theology, I encourage you to make a Korean language Presbyterian theology YouTube channel. If you do that, I will promote your channel because I want to support these churches in these countries. The same goes for like Hungary and Romania. If you speak Hungarian or Romanian and you want to make a Reformed theology YouTube channel, please do so. I will promote your channel. I will shout it out on my channel. And even, like, outside of the Reformed tradition, if you are a Slovakian Lutheran, I encourage you to make a video promoting, uh, I encourage you to make a channel, a Slovakian Lutheran channel, and I will promote that as well. The same is true if you're, I don't know, Polish Reformed or Lithuanian Reformed, especially if you're Lithuanian Reformed, because this is not even on the list, but I am uh, one quarter Lithuanian myself, 
And although there really aren't many Lithuanian Reformed churches, the ones that do exist are awesome. So I support that as well. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I hope this was informative to you. And even if you're not in any of the three countries I listed, this map has churches all over the world. So if you are looking to find a traditional, beautiful, but also conservative Protestant church, the map is linked in the description. You can find that. I encourage everyone who wants to follow Jesus to go to church because the church is the body of Christ. So you cannot be a Christian if you refuse to go to church. All right, guys, thank you for watching this, and I will see you guys later.